Glory to God. My brethren, peace of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles on the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel 24. We're going to read only verse 10. Ezekiel 24, verse 10. This, the, this test was chosen because of uh, the spiritual gift that was given. First book about the family, the need of the gaps being closed, the failures, the flaws, and the permanence, constant permanence on the failure. So the Lord is giving here an alert to a family of, family, family of five people that they need to be more in the presence of the Lord, more in sanctification, trying to seek a closeness with the Lord. In doing this, they will be blessed even more by the Lord. So, Ezekiel 24, verse 10, the cause of the gap is uh, the gap to be open, wide open. It, it is canceling the project of God in their lives. A family that could have been even much more spiritually speaking, much farther ahead, much more forward, but they are stepping back because the failure, the mistake remaining in disobedience is causing this uh, these people to be apart from the Lord. And the other gift was speaking about the importance of us to to knock at the door of grace and for us to seek and fight for a blessing, not to weigh everything to be given to us easily and for the things to be given in a, in a reckless way. Like, for example, I'm good, I'm Maranatha, I'm Christian, so God has to, has to bless me. The doors needed, need to be open. The healing needs to come because I'm from Maranatha. No, that's not how it works. We are subject, we are living in a world where we are subject to all things, but we need to have a life of sanctification. Without sanctification, no one will see the Lord. So, so tonight the Lord wants us to tackle this aspect in our spiritual life. And even in our lives, in our secular life, in our relationships with the family members, with co-workers, with neighbors. You know, because the servant of God needs to be a servant everywhere. So let's speak about a little about this tonight. The text says the following. Heap on the wood, kindle the fire, cook the meat well, mix in the spices, and let the cuts be burnt up. Amen. The version that they lie is shown to speak a little different, but in summary, that's what it is. My brethren, inside of what the Lord has shown for the service, we see that from the day in which we began to believe in the Lord, Jesus, for the moment in which we have begun to have a new spiritual walk in the presence of the Lord, from this moment, in which you have been taken away from the world, you have been rescued from the world, you have been brought to live under the, the protecting hands of the Lord, giving heed to the words of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit began to do a work, a work that we can say, a work of transformation in our hearts. 
and be, the Spirit began to work, began to show to us that we are not being left abandoned, that we are not here by pure chance. You didn't come to this world simply to do whatever you want to do. You came here because you are a person that has been chosen by God and the Lord has a project to perform through your life. And the Holy Spirit now begins to cause us to begin to understand this project and to accept this work. And the Holy Spirit comes and, and is persistent and works and it uses resources. It uses all every means, spiritual means, in order to cause us to understand and accept this project. And firstly, the Holy Spirit begins to work and to cause us to, uh, for us to cancel our former nature, our ego, the old man, what we used to be and what we are still today. And the Holy Spirit needs to and works and uses the resources from eternity to cause us to understand that we we are nothing but we have someone and this someone is our God because we are needy and we are we have necessities and that we are dependent on the blessings of God and the text speaks of a moment that's the ex exactly this moment this process of transformation operated by the Lord through his word through his doctrine so the Holy Spirit now uses the prophet Hezekiah, Ezekiel, I'm sorry, to say a parable to the people. The people that lived in Israel that always was in a situation of going high and low. When they obeyed the Lord, they lived in, in a life of plenty. They lived under the blessing. They were protected and kept by the Lord. But when they went outside of the project and the commitment they have, they have taken with the Lord, they now, with the permission of God, to go through trials, struggles, and they begin to live difficult moments. And that's how it was, and we can say, is to this day, the nation of Israel. The history of Israel from its beginning, because God uses Israel to show to us, to the world, that Israel is the chosen nation, chosen by God, and that we, men, no longer the nation of Israel, the whole humanity, we have been chosen by God to live an eternity. And now Hezekiah said the following. He tells a parable. He uses uh, an illustration to attempt to open the mind of the people. And he says, Heap on the wood. Heap on the wood. So he gives an instruction. He relays uh, uh, through this parable to cause the people to understand. It's like an audiovisual. He wanted to enter into the mind of people. So gather wood. Keep heap on the wood. So, gather all the wood you find and kindle the fire. So, no one makes uh, uh, firewood with wood, uh, with uh, precious wood. They always use kindle because kindle is wood that nobody wants. It's a reject. It's a type of wood. It's the worst type possible as they are not, it's a wood that is no use, it's a wood filled with defects. The carpenter, when it's getting ready to build a piece of furniture, a table, chair, or a guitar, uh, the carpenter chooses very well the wood. If the wood has lots of knots and needs to be worked on, or something that would 
end up causing a defect is going to be exposed it doesn't use that wood now this wood is going to be used for fire so Ezekiel says the following now go heap on the wood kindle the fire and the wood in the Bible it typifies what? It typifies man all of us there in Genesis we see this a man is typified by the wood. God uses this. And God uses this aspect to make our understanding a little easier. So the wood typifies man and our own nature. So he says, go there, gather the wood, kindle the fire, and now, gather the wood, pile it up, and set it on fire. So now, according to the gifts that the Lord has given us, you're going to go tonight. Everything that is part of our human nature, everything that is part of our own personal feelings, what we can say our tendencies, our inclinations, our weaknesses, our traumas, there are people that are traumatized and they have suffered and they don't forget what caused a certain pain in the past because of maybe a family member or someone else. They don't forget this. They, they spend the rest of their life in that trauma. And there are people also that they have personalities they are, that are very difficult. People that are complicated. People that don't let go. And they say, what I say is this and that's it. I'm right and no one else. And no use arguing with that person. Oh, if I say that this phone is white, that's it. Nobody's going to change my understanding. No one is going to come here and cause me to accept that. that see that this phone it, that is black. It's black. For me, it is white. So tonight, the Lord wants us to pick up all of what is hindering your spiritual life. I don't know what it is. Me looking at the faces of all of you, to me, you are all saints. You are the flock that everyone wants. I cannot see looking at your faces who amongst you that has the difficult nature and has a strong personality, has trauma, has some sort of disturbance. I cannot say, maybe having a conversation with the brand, sometimes you are able to catch something, but just by looking, it's difficult to say, but the Holy Spirit is the one who knows us. You know why? Because from the day that you came to the Lord, the Holy Spirit is being persistent with you. The Lord is Spirit is persistent with me, seeing my flaws, seeing my mistakes, seeing my limitations, and He is persistent. He comes and testifies and, and requires of us and shows, and many times it hinders my spiritual growth. Maybe it hinders your spiritual growth. It hinders you from getting out this moment in which you are, where you are standing still, stagnated there. So when you let go of this, of this, the wood that does not belong to you, I'm not saying here, the wood here, that we are all bad. That's not what it is. Maybe each one of you has some sort of wood that is hidden inside of us. Maybe it's what I said, a tendency. There are people that have inclination to, towards sin. There are people that have greater the, for them it's easier to do this there are people that have their mind that only think about bad things there are people like this there are people that lie no without any hindrance they go to the supermarket and they may even have the money to pay a bill but they go there if they do not steal something and put inside of their bag you know what I mean? 
There are people like this. I'm not saying that we are here, but there are people with this kind of feeling. There are people like this, people that they are evil, people that have the tendency many times, they are leaning toward the mistake. If they don't get out of the store with something hidden, they are not happy. No, I have to steal something. Yep, there are people that are, they have possessions, but they need to steal something. They have to lie. Sometimes it's a topic that has nothing special, something easy to have a conversation with. But if they don't turn around there and say a little lie, they are not happy. There are people that are like this. And tonight the Lord Jesus wants us to close the gaps. The gaps that need to be closed. Gaps that are hindering our spiritual growth. We all have it. So, Prophet Ezekiel says the following, Be careful with this. Put your life in order. Pick up what is not is this worthless. The Holy Spirit testifies testify in your heart. Say, Lord, there is power in the, the blood of Jesus. Lord, deliver me from this. Remove this from me. Don't allow me to be defeated by something that is small, Lord. So then he says the following, Go and kindle the fire. It's not only pick it up. You need to throw it in the fire, on the firewood, and you you set it on fire. My brother, when the servant, when we begin to put our lives before God's author, seeking the Lord with sincerity, like many who are doing this right now, seeking the Lord, pleading to the Lord, opening their hearts to the Lord with sincerity, seeking the transformation of life, the Lord blesses. You know how the Lord blesses? Setting the fire. Starting the fire, because the fire of the Holy Spirit, because the fire of the Holy Spirit, it is the fire of the Holy Spirit that is going to burn what is worthless. It's going to burn the fat. And this fire of the Holy Spirit is already lit in us. You know why? Because from the day that you're being baptized with the Holy Spirit, from the day that the Lord baptized you with the Holy Spirit, that fire had been uh, lit in you, and you have been have had a stamp with, of, of salvation. So now the Holy Spirit is increasing the temperature. Tonight, you you're going to to increase the temperature of this fire. You're going to allow the Holy Spirit to enter into your heart and burn everything that does not, it is worthless. Because when we are in this situation, the Holy Spirit operating, burning, where there is joy, where the joy of salvation is renewed and the joy of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is not being baptized again, but this joy that one day the Lord gave you when you are being baptized, when you have been touched by the Holy Spirit. The Lord tonight wants to renew this. He wants to once again touch in your life. Why is that? So that you can face the trials and the temptations of this world. Because the Lord tonight wants to give you boldness to each one of us so that we may say no to sin, no to the kindle. Uh, or something that may stand out, that want to take control of, us, of our lives once again. You know why, my brand? Because the servant of God needs to live in this way. The servant of God that wants to go to heaven needs to be preparing for the rapture of the church. The Lord Jesus, when he ordered his disciples that they should not do anything, that they should not leave Jerusalem until that they would be covered by the Holy Spirit. And my brethren, the church will not going to leave, you're not going to go to heaven, you're going. To, you are not going to reach eternity if you're not covered by the Holy Spirit. It is biblical. It's not because I'm preaching or because the Maranatha preaches this. No, this is biblical. Do not go, do not get out of Jerusalem before you receive power from the Holy Spirit. So the church is going to be taken away from this world when the Holy Spirit has complete control of our lives. That's why, my brethren, the Lord wants to speak to our hearts. He says, Hezekiah continues, 
cook the meat well, mixing the spices, the Lord is going to, the, the meat was going to be consumed. The Lord says that every inclination of the flesh leads to death. If we are, if you are being leaning towards flesh, if you are leaning towards the, f the pleasures of flesh, then you are dying. My brother and sister, be careful. That's the word that's saying this. Inclination of the flesh, every inclination of the flesh, every carnal inclination leads to death. That's why we need to live in spirit and in truth. You know why? Because everything that comes from the flesh, the pleasure of the flesh, needs to be consumed, needs to be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because flesh, there's no worth. The, the joy may be fleeting, and then afterwards come the remorse, and then the guilt. Thank God. That guilt many times comes back. Bad is when the servant of God sins, when the servant of God lives in sin and remains in sin, and he opens his heart to sin, and the remorse does not come, or the pain does not come. That's dangerous. So, for as long as the Holy Spirit makes you suffer and lose nights of sleep, lose your peace, the Holy Spirit is still struggling with you. For the moment that the Holy Spirit lets go of you, it's because you have no solution. And if today you have made a mistake, if today you disobeyed the, to the Lord, there was pain, and then glorify the Lord. Because that's what the Lord wants to do for you, with you. And so let's continue. The Word of God, the Lord of God says that the flesh, the, you need to cook the meat well. Because whoever wants to proceed in this, the kingdom of God and to go to heaven, to be a part of the church, the body of Christ, needs to let go of the old man, the, nat the nature of the flesh. The Ezekiel says, mixing the spices. Imagine you're preparing a meat. Now you have the, the pan, putting the ingredients there, putting the meat there. Now you're going to put a little salt, uh, garlic, and seasoning. That's what Hezekiah was saying. He was comparing the, the story there with uh, meat that is being cooked. What are the spices? What the Lord speaks about seasoning is the revealed word, is the doctrine. It's when men are opening their heart and absorbing all the teaching that's being relayed by the Lord to the church on Sunday school, on the, the studies that you make at home, in the moment in which you are alone praying to the Lord. You are there at that moment, placing, adding the seasoning in your spiritual life. And so all of us, we want to live in this way. One day, the Lord said to a group, you know why you are making mistakes? You know why you fail so much? Because you don't know the Scriptures. You fail because you do not know the Scriptures. And my brethren, it is extremely important for the church, for you, servant, to know the Word. The revealed Word. It's not only the letter, but the revealed Word. And you do, do you know why? Because in this way that you will be able to discern what comes from man, and what comes from God. Knowing the Word, seeking fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and discerning all this, you'll be able to know that when the enemy makes an invitation to you, you won't be able to say no. Man thinks that living off of just hearing a word in the church is maybe sufficient. That's not true. We need to put the seasoning in our in our spiritual life. We need to set aside moments, individual with the Lord, moment in, the, in devotional moments with the Lord in prayer and Bible study, and you reading a text and go there, and then Matthew says something, Luke says something else. The same story, the gospel is good because there are 
that we have four versions of people that witness what Jesus did. So then you go to Matthew, read a verse. Then you go and look, you read something else. Maybe look at something that Matthew didn't write. So it's very good when we study the Word. We absorb the doctrine completely. And that's how the Lord will bless the church. And let the cuts be burned up. So burn the wood, the, the bones. <coughs> the bones speaks of the structure of the church, speaks of the doctrine of the church, speaks of what we have the most pressures. In the Son of God, we'll only be able to achieve a spiritual maturity, we'll only be able to achieve a spiritual level if they allow the bones to be burning. If he withstand the trial, the, then first comes the flesh and then the bone. Why is that? Because if you take the, the piece of meat before the time, the bone is not going to be burning. But if you open up your heart to the Lord, truly, you will be able to stand, withstand and accept completely what the Holy Spirit is doing for our life. And burning the bones is exactly this. It is for you to be growing the presence of the God and maturing spiritual life. And that's what matters for us. And that's what matters. You know why? Because the more the Holy Spirit grows, more we will grow smaller. The more the Holy Spirit takes place in our lives, more the wood that is in us will disappear. So my brethren, Paul, when they said one thing, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That's what it is to allow the bone to be burnt. This is what you to allow your spiritual structure to be completely taken over by the Holy Spirit. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And you're going to say this when people offer you something that is not part of the life of a servant. I, you'll be able to say, I, I no longer live. I died for this. Jesus died for me, and I died for this. And now, Jesus lives in me. So now, finishing this word here, it says this, because the Lord Jesus, He wants to give to us all this understanding. I spoke about the inclination of the flesh, which is death. But the inclination to the Spirit is life and life and peace. So when we are letting the flesh, letting go of the flesh and leaning towards the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to do what is convenient for our life, spiritual life, we are growing spiritually. We are acquiring the, the blessing, complete blessing of the Lord for our lives. My brethren, it's difficult. Sometimes it's easy to say, but it's very difficult to allow the Holy Spirit to do this. But now, tonight, the Lord wants to work in our lives. The Lord wants you to be touched once again by the Holy Spirit and that you may receive tonight the blessing that you have been seeking. We are not deserving of anything. Don't think that just because one day you open your heart to Jesus, now you deserve to go to heaven. You deserve to uh, earn $40 per hour. We need a house. No, we don't deserve anything. Because the grace that we... Us, because we are now saved by Jesus, it should be enough for us. But the Lord has takes pleasure in blessing us. But He will only bless us if you leave a blessing in sanctification on the Spirit. That's why tonight the Lord wants to give to all of us this message we're not here uh, criticizing anyone here. We're not correcting anyone. We're just saying what is the will of the Lord. According to the spiritual gifts that the Lord has given us for the service tonight. So now you need to say to yourself, I, need, I truly need this blessing. I need Lord to place my life onto your author. I need to pray more. I need to study your Bible more. I need to allow those spirit to be in control, incomplete of my life. Amen. So now we're going to hear a song, and you 
can follow, singing a song wherever you are, or you in spirit of prayer, you may say, Lord, touch my life. Tonight, we knew we are coming close to have more services. From next week, we are going to have services in presence. We are going to reopen the church. From next Saturday, we're going to reopen the church. And we need to be ready to receive people. People that are going to be care brought. People that need to be evangelized. People that need, even us. How long have we been watching the service on Zoom? Glory to God. It's a blessing. But we need to do our part as a church. The church will be open. And we need to evangelize so that there may be a growth. Not only spiritual, but a, a, a growth in number of people need to accept Jesus. People that need to live this that we are living. But for this, it is necessary for us to seek and to dedicate our lives in a greater way.
Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord for what the Lord has done today since the early dawn service to the ones who got up earlier and prayed to the Lord. For the ones that during the day pray to the Lord on behalf of the service, on behalf of your spiritual life, and for the ones who are doing everything that the Lord has, has already taught us for our spiritual growth, we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise your holy name, Father, because we know that you are taking care of our lives. Many times we go through trials and tribulations, and we understand, Father, that many times it is the purpose of the Lord. But we know, Lord, that, Father, that you will be in control of everything. We're thankful for the word that was given to us tonight because it's, it is our, our food, our sustenance, our comfort for this walk. We're thankful, Lord, because we know that we wake up in the morning already praying at your feet and we spend the day in your presence and we can finish the day glorifying you and praising your name. We're thankful, Lord, for this salvation that is being renewed in our lives because we are standing in your presence and because we are able to praise and glorify your name. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. We ask Pastor Sabbath to pray for the ones who need a renewal from the part of the Lord. Now you close your eyes and you are going to place your life beyond God's altar as for blessing, a forgiveness to the Lord, a blessing of renewal, of a new opportunity, and that this service may serve as, as a landmark for each one of us and a moment in which, a moment of change, a moment in which the Lord is going to say from this day forward, I want to serve you better. I want to be a servant, more willing. I want to glorify more your name. I want to be honored, Lord, by you. I'll ask the pastor Sabbath to pray for the ones who are praying. Once again, Lord, we raise a plea with the precious blood of Jesus and present before your author our lives, your people. And please, Lord, tonight that you, your fire may be consumed and eliminate from the life of each one of us all the sentiment and the feeling, action. Lord God, that everything that is in us, Lord, that is, that is not part of a project that has been interfered in our fellowship with you, Lord. Every human reason may be consumed, Lord, in our lives, and that you may purify and sanctify us, Lord. My church, I'm lighting up in your hearts the fire of my eternity, operating in a way in a, a mighty way so that you may feel the warmth of my spirit, the renewal. I collect your intercessions. I have been pleased with your sincerity of your, your view as you seek your God. I give to you, my son, my servant, I tell you that I love you greatly and have a great blessing for you in my presence. Every day, make yourself willing, your 
able to serve me and to remain standing because I will sustain you. I will be giving you the means to transmit what comes from my eternity. I also have a promise for your family members. I want to awake. Awaken them through your life. Uh, relight my salvation in them. And also my beloved daughter that has placed uh, before your God your physical health. I tell you that at this moment you already feel my power in your life. Beloved Church, stay every day with a sincere heart presented to me with, with praise before your God. Lord to God, confirm your word, your servants, and at every moment, Lord, your Holy Spirit may confirm this in our life. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the, the word is back with Pastor Ronildo. Let's pray finishing. Lord, receive our adoration, our service, Lord, to your name. And give us a night of rest in your presence. And that tomorrow, Lord, once again, we may begin listening to your teachings and participating on Sunday school and on the afternoon. We may be reading a word, setting moments aside to know your mysteries and that on the service tonight, at night, we may once again glorify, express your our gratitude. The prayer that we say in the name of Jesus, amen. And that in your name you say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations, and the gift of the Holy Spirit may pour out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My brethren, peace of the Lord have come to the end of the service. If anybody desires a prayer, we will be here. And soon after, after the brethren have greeted one another, we'll be here for a few more minutes to give assistance and pray to the ones who need, reinforcing what he was said in the message. This coming Saturday, we're going to return to our services in presence. I believe that the last service was with Group C, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go back with Group A, initially with Group A, the same procedure with all the cares necessary. Nobody is required to go to the service. If you feel you don't feel safe to go to the service, we're going to still have uh, the service through Zoom. So I ask that the brethren continue to be praying for this new phase in the church and that we may not have any more interruption and that from this day forward, we may have services, normal services, and more services during the week. Amen. And I want to say the peace of the Lord to wish the peace of the Lord to everyone. Amen. Sim, sou eu também, pastor. Pai, Senhor, Gabi. 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 Pai, Senhor,